In the text of Babette's feast, what Babette creates is referred to just as a dinner. Yet the title of the short story and the film and the play is Babette's Feast. So we have this opportunity as artists, and the audience is part of that, of participating in and creating a feast. And we're theater artists, so of course we're, we're really invested in, in the feast-like aspects of the theater, that it hits us on many levels and layers. There's visual, there's auditory, there's, and, the, and everything's changing, and we even have some experimentation with olfactory senses. We'll see yes. how this all <laughs> happens, how it all works out together, and we believe it will be a feast for the audience, a feast of the senses, and a feast for the heart. Babette's Feast was written by Isaac Dennison, and uh, I think it's arguably one of the greatest short stories of all time in English, mm -hmm. honestly. Mm -hmm. it's, just, it's just perfect, and it, it's interesting because it deals with generosity, but um, Isaac Dennison is so generous to each and every character. Yes. They're all so yes. vivid, and mm -hmm. you, just, you just want to spend time with all of them, mm -hmm. I think. I do. Mm -hmm. The story is so rich, it, it almost, demands to live again in a new way. The short story is a beautiful read. I encourage everyone to read it. The film is also beautiful. I encourage everyone to see it. And each, whether you've been exposed to those or not, this experience will be something entirely new that will either enhance your history of the piece or encourage you to go back to those other, those other pieces of art that already exist. It's just, it's an important story, and, but it's told with beauty and elegance. Yeah. So again, everybody, and General. We're indebted to Karin, our director Karin's vision in this, that this is a, the world's story. It's not an isolated, the community is isolated in the northern part of Norway, but we all have something, we can all connect to this story in a particular way. And so the casting is reflective of the population of the world. And since we're in the middle of the biggest refugee crisis since World War II, and many of those refugees are not white, it seemed also important, and this is different than the film, to cast a woman of color as Babette. And we're so excited we got Michelle to play the role. <laughs> She's bringing ferocity and honor and truth and dignity to the title character. What I thought was intriguing once I got this part was the fact that indeed Babette is a stranger in a strange land and yet she is a woman coming from an area of the world at a time in the world um, we're talking the mid-1800s, where as a woman, she's probably had to fight for everything, every inch, every bit of food, every status in, in the world at that time. And so she has a strong demeanor. There's something about her that makes her go forward no matter what anyone puts in her way. Um, but she gets to a point in the telling of this story in which she must leave her home. Babette enters the play a friendless fugitive, almost mad with grief and fear. That's from the play. And she exits an angel of grace. It is the story of a community transformed through the generosity and the sacrifice of an outsider. You will understand that there's a universality and an international sort of framework in it. It is in English, but it's flavored the same way you would flavor a meal with all these other tinges, a little bit of French, a little bit of German, a little Norwegian, uh, the different kinds of meals, the different kinds of dishes, that kind of thing will kind of let you know, oh, I can relax. I don't have to stare at the stage this much. I will get it. All over the news, we see fear associated with refugees, even even very recently. And this is an opportunity for us to consider what gifts the refugee, the stranger, the other brings, can bring to a community. We all know someone in this world 
you may not think you do, but you do indeed know someone in this world right now who is in that place of not being where they were born, not being brought up the way they were brought up, and having to come to some place else that they don't know. They may not understand the language, they may not understand that new culture, but they have no choice but to be and adapt to that new place. I think I'm not alone in being absolutely thrilled to be working with Karen Coonrod on this production. I think she's the absolute best possible director for this, so thank you for <laughs> bringing her so in. And um, Christopher Ackerlin's design is going to be stunning. And uh, the costumes, Juan Botez is a genius with costumes. You will see, this is just our rehearsal gear, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. it's more than this. But um, honestly, as an actor, it is such an amazing test to be kind of just thrown out. We're, we're, it's, it's real pure ensemble work. Mm -hmm. We have each other and we have this amazing, what almost at first feels like an empty space, mm -hmm. but then through just, just our, our, the humanity that everybody's bringing to it, we pull together this entire community, this very, very far-flung northern, tiny, tiny community that just is upended with like joy and, and just, just great surprise. We're bringing this gift that the audience unwraps mm -hmm. and we see how it lands with them. Mm -hmm. And it's so exciting. <laughs> <laughs>